Okay, you guys, I finally made this happen. Probably one of my most requested guests over the past few years. And it's been hard because I'm on the West Coast and Alex Wong is on the East Coast. Alex, I'm so <laughs> glad you're joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I know. This is a crazy Sunday morning that we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been doing? I know this has been such a strange year for all of us. Yeah, um, it's actually oddly been pretty great. Um, I mean, the first month uh, of shutdown, I guess I didn't, I really didn't do too much. Um, it was nice because I had a really, really, really busy, like, 2019 into the beginning of 2020. Um, and actually, I was in LA for most of it. Um, but like, you know, September, October, November, December, I was basically no days off. I was working on um, Little Mermaid ABC. And I was doing that six days a week, Monday to Saturday. Then I would, after rehearsal Saturday night, I would drive myself to LAX, hop on a red eye, fly to the East Coast, land like at like 8am in some city. I don't know what it was like. Dallas or Albany, New York, or somewhere random, uh -huh. land, teach my convention classes, oh, hop gosh. right back on a flight, go back to LA, land Sunday night, and then be back in rehearsal Monday morning. So I was doing that for like months. And then um, <laughs> it was very busy. And then like um, January was like Oscars and um, the, what was it? American Music Awards with Jonas Brothers and then something else. And then it was like super, super busy. Literally got back to New York and then one week after quarantine happened. So I was like, this is amazing. I was like, I need this right now. <laughs> um, Your body needed it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, so this is great. So the first month I was like totally fine. I was like, this is an excellent break. Um, and I didn't leave my apartment, not even for like a walk for a full month. Because, you know, that, that was like when we, we didn't know if you could get it literally walking by someone on the sidewalk, right? right. So, um, yeah, so it was a full month. Uh, all I did was just kind of social media stuff because everyone was on Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that. So I was kind of figuring that stuff out. Um, and then I guess mid-April, you know, I started like venturing outside for like short little trips, maybe like a walk around the block. Um, eventually I went back to the grocery store, I think in May. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, it's been pretty good since then. Um, uh, in terms of like work and stuff like that, I've been doing all of my work uh, on like social media campaigns and things like that, which has been amazing. Um, all of that has like really stepped up. And then um, I've been doing ballet class in the park with my friends and working out, like just basically doing everything outdoors. So like here, nothing, nothing indoors is really open. I mean, all the stores are open um, for, you know, limited capacity indoor shopping and things like that, but like no indoor dining, um, no movie theaters, no really like gyms or things like that, which I think they're opening kind of soon. But um, yeah, so everything I do is pretty much outdoors. Um, so it's been, it's been honestly pretty nice. It uh, hasn't been terrible for me. That's good because I know so many in New York have obviously been affected. I'm sure you know a lot of people who have been affected oh, by I this. I probably know over a hundred personal friends. Like and when I tell you, all of New York City got it. All of New York City got but it. But you? <laughs> I, did, I didn't get it. I was quite disappointed when I got my antibody test that I, I didn't have the antibodies for it because I was like, like my closest friends all got it. Um, and especially like, there was like some Broadway shows that were just completely hit. So like the entire cast of Frozen, the entire cast of Moulin Rouge, like every, you know, so um, a lot of my circles had it, but everyone actually basically got it in that first couple of weeks. And then after that, I didn't know anyone else that got it, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, probably a new, 50 to 100 people that that had it and my wow. my immediate like people that I know that's you know. a huge number too I mean it's that's amazing um you know what I was thinking like I, I was trying to remember the last time I saw you and it, it was either at an Oscars like I ran into you um I think with Carl Warden maybe oh okay yeah. so that would have been uh, three four years ago yeah did, probably four years Carl. ago I'm gonna say uh-huh Somewhere around there. Um, and I was trying to, I'm like, did I see you? I was at The Greatest Showman. You did the commercial too, didn't you? When they did yeah, it with, yeah. I was on set we, there. I couldn't remember if I saw you or not, but I was on set there. Probably, because I was on stage and there was only like, so there's like, what? It was like 200 people. There were so many dancers there. And then there's like, a select group of us, like 10 of us that were on the main stage. So yes. you would have seen me probably. Yeah, I, but I, it was one of those things that I was like, 
when did I last see him? What has he been up to? And I'm like, you have literally done everything. Like you are not defined by, Hey, I was on. So you think you can dance. And I was an all-star. You're, <laughs> I, I mean, you've had, they're like chapters of your career where you're like Miami city ballet. So you think you can dance. Um, right. You've done Broadway. A lot of people know you only from social media, which is amazing. Cause you have a huge following there. Crazy. Like a, a, a lot of the times. Um, so I still get recognized on the street street often, especially if I'm out, I'd say, you know, once a day or something like that. And I noticed like a shift of like, oh my gosh, like you're that, you're that dancer. Like I, I follow you on Instagram or like, I love your stuff on social media or whatever. And I'm like, oh, like what an interesting shift. Right. But <laughs> almost a good shift because in a year like this, you're able to make money of doing social media campaigns. You, mm -hmm. you could do it in your apartment. You can do it outside. There's not any limitations for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it really, yeah, it really, social media really stepped up this year, which has been like really amazing. I'm so fortunate for that. What do you know that, was there a moment or a particular video that you did, whether it was on TikTok or Instagram that you saw the shift and when you're like, oh, this is, this is a game changer. Not a particular video because I think um, there was a particular video where I think I started getting getting my my overall brand idea kind of as as my persona on social media. But it, there was definitely not a particular video something like that where I was like, oh, this is like can be something because I think none of us really knew um, social media could be like a either like a full time job or that there would be careers that are launched from social media choreographers that are launched from YouTube, you know, singers that are from YouTube, um, you know, people that have grown up only in social media, you know what I mean? Like even mm -hmm. watching like the Sean Luz and like the, you know, the Kate, um, Casey, Casey Rice, Rice. It's like yeah. you, you watch them grow up on social media and like you realize that there are a whole group of dancers that may never work a dance job. They'll do their own things and, and have a full dance career like that, which has been so interesting because I don't think that you would have ever dreamed that something like that would have existed. Right. Um, you know, even back when social media started. So it's been a really interesting um, journey and in just navigating this whole space. Um, do you have, what do you think like, because now you've got TikTok, you've got Reels. Are you seeing any sort of shift between the two of them? Because I know it's like Instagram's trying to take away some TikTok business. Are you doing both of them or how, right. how do you um, balance it all out? So I mostly do, here's the thing. I actually don't post that much. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 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 I keep everything fairly casual. I probably post two maybe three times a week like and not even really much to stories like i like there there are people that post daily and multiple stories daily and this is not me i don't spend that much time on it um i like tiktok um for its creativity um there's just so much creativity on tiktok and to be discoverable as um a new creator is like so much better on tiktok mm -hmm. um i think it's like the heart of TikTok that is really, really good. The creativity, you know, the discoverability, um, and, you know, like the, the easy editing, in-app editing features that just also encourages creativity. Um, Reels, unfortunately, has not been able to emulate that. Um, okay. they, they implemented it in like a weird way where you like can't really access it and um, the editing features are not the same and there isn't like a, place you can go to which is kind of the big thing with tiktok is like when you go on tiktok you're automatically brought to your the for you page which is like the instagram explore page and that's what people are scrolling through you don't even really scroll through your your like your personal feed most of the time i'm scrolling through the for you page, uh, page. and that's how that's why you know users on tiktok are able to get such um new users and reach and stuff like that because everyone's just looking at the for you page whereas on instagram for reels there isn't a separate thing so you're going to the explore page you're clicking on a certain reel to even access those reels and then from there you have to kind of scroll and it's like not really bringing you in anywhere like you can't really even access reels and so you're not getting that same um organic reach that you would on on tiktok and um i know that instagram has boosted the reels algorithm just because i noticed now like so if i post let's say i post a video 
I might get 150,000 views. But if I post that video on Reels, I'll probably get like 400,000 views. Now I don't know, I don't know how useful those views are because I don't have insights on Reels posts yet. So I have yeah. insights on my regular Instagram posts and I can see like where these views are coming from. Are they coming from hashtags? Are they coming from new users? Are they coming from the Explore page? Whereas on Reels, I can't, I don't have that insight to break it down yet. They don't, they don't provide it to me, but I can just see the view numbers are a lot higher. So um, I definitely know that Instagram is boosting Reels um, reachability, but I don't know, I don't know what it's doing. But yeah, so in terms of creating on Reels, not really. I'm yeah. kind of doing the same thing, um, but I'm, you know, I, I post it to both or sometimes things are only suitable for TikTok. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I think TikTok's great to get inspired from or even, you know, just like to surf around and watch stuff. But yeah, it's different. It is. Yeah, it is interesting to watch the the growth of the, of the two different um, platforms and how they've affected dance quite a bit. It's it's really been fascinating to watch over the past couple of years. Mm. Um, I I wonder though. This is the one thing, and I know you're not posting every single day, but do you feel pressure in terms of creativity? Like, what haven't I done? What can I do? Um, because you know, are are people going to like this? I'm sure you know what videos land for your viewers already. Mm. Yeah. Um. I mean. Yes, pressure just because I'm pretty consistent in my life in general. Um, so I like to be pretty consistent on social media as a result. And so, um, yeah, there's definitely that thing of like, okay, like I gotta make content that my users, that my followers will like. Um, and just kind of like making sure I think of ideas or concepts or trends and things like that. Um, and just kind of making sure I do it really. I, my favorite ones are the ones where you just kind of like leap past someone in the middle of the <laughs> city. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Those are my absolute favorite. And I feel, you know, it's so funny. I, I feel like you post a lot because your videos last a long time. They kind of circulate maybe through Instagram and then all of a sudden they'll show up on Twitter or they'll show up on Facebook. So they have mm -hmm. like a long <laughs> life cycle, I find. And I'm like, right, oh, that's, what I, that's what I hope for, right? Yeah. Like I hope, I hope for a long life cycle so I get a big bang for my buck and then I'm not posting, you know, something every single day and like not getting, a, you know, I, my, my, my goal is like you said, just to let it kind of circulate for a second and then, you know, Hang on. Yeah. Like just let it go. But that's, but I think that's why a lot of people sort of discover you. Cause it's like, it will eventually migrate itself over to Facebook and then people share it a million times and they're like, Oh, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that face. Um, has this year, cause this year has been such a strange year. Has it, um, changed your focus at all in terms of your dance career or opened you up to new ideas, giving you different thoughts that when we're, things are really open again, you're like, I'm going to pursue this, or I really have always had a goal in dance to do this. Mm. Um, unfortunately, ooh, maybe not really. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing now, which is already anything that comes my way. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't think I've ever really had like a, a clear path of exactly like what I do. So like, um, I know last year I, I had been really wanting to work with a lot of um, artists because I haven't done a lot of that. And, and last year was like, or was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. I did Paula Abdul, Taylor Swift, Jonas Brothers, uh, this early this year, Janelle Monet, which I hadn't really done any artists prior to that. So I was like, this is great. Like, that's what I wanted to do, whatever. Um, and um, I love doing movie musicals. So, or anything, whatever. So I did like great a- showman, um, hey. Like a <laughs> Dolly Parton, a Christmas movie musical in the summer. I shot that. So that should come out next year. I did In the Heights, very short little bit of In the Heights, which comes out also next year. Um, but I love doing that. So, I mean, the only thing that really made me think um, that I need to change kind of during this pandemic is uh, I, so I have both Canadian and American passports mm -hmm. and um, I'm not a British Columbia local, but I, I should be because that's where I was born and raised. My pa that's my address is still on my passport there, and production has kind of started back up in um, BC, in Vancouver, and a lot of the times they hire uh, BC locals. Have and you called so, Mandy Moore? <laughs> <laughs> well, literally for Zoe's extraordinary playlist, like they're they're already starting to shoot, right? And uh, and like 
I can't take advantage of my um, Canadian citizenship because I'm not a BC local because I don't file taxes in BC. So mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I that from quarantine I'm looking into because I'm like, oh, like because things are starting back up there, I should probably get my residency back in Canada just because you know things are happening there and um, I'm always getting asked like, oh, can you work as a BC local? Which I could, but I think I need to. Um, file taxes but I mean it's not like it's really bitten me in the butt before because for instance for Greatest Showman um, I was actually supposed to work on Descendants 2 you know that Disney Channel movie yeah. Can so I actually that? had started um, Skeleton Crew everything rehearsed I flew to Vancouver to start shooting and I didn't get approved by production because I wasn't a BC local I was a Canadian citizen but not a specific BC local right and so I didn't get approved by production and so I left Flew back to New York, and a week later, I booked Greatest Showman. So it was like, it's not the worst thing. No, it's um, not the worst thing. <laughs> uh, because there was a lot of there was a lot of mileage on Greatest Showman. I mean, you guys yeah. were at the Oscars. I, you did that amazing commercial when it was what was it with a Christmas story? Yeah, I mean, it was like honestly like a one year thing because it was like we shot whatever, and then like we had reshoots, and then we had promo, and like we did like you know Today Show with Hugh Jackman, and then we did like we had a lot of promo. So and it was sidewalk it was, like, really musical. Amazing. You did the sidewalk, sidewalk musical. musical. Yes, I did. Yeah. Sidewalk musical with James Corden. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, like you said, a lot of mileage. We did, I did promo for that for a long time and it was, and then when it came out and then there was that and then, you know, so it was, it was great. Yeah, it's probably worth, you definitely get in your residency though for um, BC only because I know for Mandy, when I interviewed her for season one, she said we were running out of dancers because we, they can only use them a couple times mm. and they were flying them in from Toronto. <laughs> Mm. because they weren't able to use them. And then I know Hallmark is shoot, shooting a dance movie right now in um, Vancouver. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, I, wonder so there's definitely I wonder if that's Christopher Gatelli because he's doing something. It's, um, right. No, it's Michael Damien who does all the High Strung movies. Oh, oh, okay. I know him too. Yeah. He's... Yeah, Jean-Marc Genereau is doing the choreography. Okay. And yeah, see, that's, why, that's why I'm like, maybe I should just place myself there because then <laughs> it's, you know, it would be fine. But I just don't know what, what it entails if I had to have filed my taxes like the previous year or if I can suddenly just get residency back. I don't know how it works. So yeah, yeah. definitely worth looking into. I know yeah. we're looking into my, um, my family just found out because my family is, is Canadian and I don't have a Canadian passport. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I should get one now. Uh, <laughs> Things are going crazy here in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've started the process for that. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, just to have it, just do the back. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's amazing to have both. I mean, and I, you know, I, I literally grew up in Canada. It's like my home too, so. Yeah, my family's from um, Quebec. So I was okay. like the opposite side of the, the uh, country. But um, yeah, Vancouver's great. It's so beautiful there. And because production's up and running, LA has been very slow to come back, unfortunately. So yeah, are things shooting in LA or? Reality shows are. So scripted is just starting to go back um, within the next few weeks. So we won't see a lot of those shows appear probably until late fall or early next year. But like the Dancing with the Stars is coming back. Right. Um, they're they're figuring they're, out a way to do it. They're doing like where like the stars have to live alone or something like that. Like even they're if they have like, a significant other, they're supposed to quarantine in a in a weird way. I'm calling it quarantine ish like, because the we have a lot of married pros, you know, like Jenna and Val are married to each yeah. other. They're not allowed to live together. Right. That's what I like, read. PETA, who's married to Max, Max is not doing the show. She's allowed to live with her family. So I don't know like how that's oh. all playing out. I know. Um, that's not going to work. <laughs> this also, call like, also like, I mean, if you're still, you know, going out and doing stuff and you're exposed to the rest of the crew and whatnot, I mean, uh, whatever. I yeah, they've, they've created like for rehearsals, it's all robotic cameras <clears throat> in the room. So it's only oh. the star and the pro in the room. And then there's a production room with like a field producer and a camera operator, like moving the cameras mm, around. Interesting. And the, the producer can talk to them like if they need to do, you know, hey, interviews. Okay, we got to do interviews, blah, blah, blah. They can talk to them over an intercom um, and they're getting tested for COVID every day. So there's, there's definitely like some. Oh, they get tested every single day? Every day. All right. I mean, that would work. Yeah, you would know. I, yeah. I mean, I think that that would work. If you're getting testing every day, then I think that, I mean, honestly, I, in an ideal situation, everyone should be able to get tested every day. I mean, there are 
I, I don't know if you were paying attention, but um, Michael Mina, which is like the Harvest, Harvard epidemiologist, um, was suggesting that like there should be saliva-based tests, which there are. There's, there, they they were, they're just not FDA approved because they're not that, they're not sensitive enough as, as much as a nasal swab, but they're sensitive enough that, you know, it'll find most people. So if, if they could, you know, roll out these saliva-based tests, you just spit on a piece of paper, kind of like a pregnancy test, you get results in 10 to 15 minutes or whatever. And if everyone were to take these screeners every single day, you know, we'd be able to get this under control in just a few weeks. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. It's like just a whole, the whole thing of whether or not people, you know, the FDA thinks it's nonsense enough that it'll cause more issues than it will. But you know, I don't know. I mean, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Right. I know. I was like, I came to do quarantine for two weeks. They're like, we're going to shut down for two weeks here in LA. <laughs> it's August. Oh, it's almost September. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be two weeks. In my mind, I had already mostly from the first, the first, when we went into quarantine, I was like, this is at least going to be six months. And then after like the first two weeks, I was like, I'm writing off the rest of 2020. Yeah. Um, how about the Broadway community for you? I mean, you obviously have been a part of the Broadway community. You have a lot of friends. This is a tough thing. And I, I keep hearing, you know, spring for a couple shows, but I keep on hearing fall is kind of like the big marker for Broadway reopening. How is the mm. community doing? Um, I think the community is having a really tough time. I've been doing a ton of um, like, what do you call those? Uh, like not Zoom, but like virtual, um, shows or whatever like mm. virtual benefits where i'll yeah. film something and then it'll be part of like the benefit or whatever i've been doing a ton of those for the broader community um they're not doing particularly well because most um broader people kind of only stick to broadway um and so a lot of people have left new york and gone to you know wherever their parents live or whatever because there's just no work for them at the moment and paying these high rent things in New York City has been tough for a lot of these performers. And so, um, yeah, I'd say the Broadway community is definitely suffering. I think um, for the most part, it seems like uh, people are aiming for this early spring reopening um, or the shows are gonna go back into rehearsal in that kind of time frame. Um, that's kind of what the general consensus seems like. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. I think that, it, you know, everything changes so much, even within a month to month time frame. I'm thinking that hopefully, you know, I mean, a new rapid test was approved uh, just last week. Um, and it's not, it's a, it's still a nasal swab, but it's able to give results in 15 minutes. Um, but it's not approved as a screener, which is, I don't know why, or it's kind of silly, but it, but you have, you're supposed to show symptoms before you're allowed to use that <laughs> test. <laughs> like, why? I mean, just But of course, if people, you're asymptomatic. Uh, let, let people use it. But anyway, I'm assuming that th things will develop in the next month or two that that test or more tests will be approved to use as screener tests and things will be able to, you know, get better. I mean, like, especially even if you're saying like people in Dancing with the Stars are able to get tests every day then you know, we're on the right track, at least hoping to roll it out to the masses in a few months or so and hopefully yeah, fingers get crossed. this under. Because I get, mean, get... in the fall and the winter, I mean, you don't have the option to go outside as much, so. I know, and you, I always worry about restaurants because they're like, outdoor dining. Well, that's fine here in California, but yeah. a lot of the country, you're not gonna be in sub-zero weather like eating your burger. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, like here, we, we still don't have indoor dining, which I don't disagree with. Um, but yeah, the outdoor dining has been amazing. You know, like all the restaurants have outdoor dining. It's bustling, which is great. But yeah, I don't know, come, come October, even late September sometimes, but come October when it gets a little chilly to, to eat, and especially in November, that'll be done. Yeah. So... I'll be totally done. Yeah, we'll oh, fingers crossed. Um, you know, one thing I just want to sort of wrap up with, because I think that you um, have diversified your career so much. There's, as I said, there's so many different chapters, which is incredible. <laughs> what advice do you, because I know you teach a lot, what advice do you give the younger generation? Because I think things, in some ways, it seems like there's so many more opportunities, but I also think it's a lot harder in the dance industry than it was even 10 years ago. Um, hmm. 
advice, I would just say, train really, really hard. Train in as many styles as you can. Um, and, you know, like you were saying, I think that diversification is important. That's what keeps me employed. So to be able to sing and dance and stuff like that, like I'm not working only Broadway. I'm not working only ballet company jobs or I'm not working only artists and award shows. You know what I mean? So I think being able to diversify is really the most important thing. Like sometimes like, you know, I if I was doing like a ballet TV series, like Flesh and Bone or something like that, and then I do like, you know, artist dancing that's more you know jazz funk hip-hop kind of thing or even like musical theater where you're singing on stage or even on on camera um so i think just being able to diversify themselves and then i mean just kind of believing in that dream i guess to to make sure to keep on dreaming but not but dreaming and working hard and going for it i think a lot of dancers have difficulty with consistency and keeping themselves on track and responsibility. I think artists tend to uh, dream and kind of like have this idea and they can often get lost in in these things. And I think holding yourself accountable and um, for many things, I, like realizing that often it might be your fault that you didn't get certain things, but being okay with that because rejection is always going to be a thing. Um, like I, I think like, oh, Sometimes you just aren't good enough, but sometimes it's really just the color of your hair, you know? Right. And and you might never know, and you just have to be like, okay, so it might've been the color of my hair, but it, I probably could have been even better. So let's improve on that and not be like, either like be like, oh, well, they don't like my hair, so screw them or whatever. <laughs> you can You can take it as an opportunity of, Sure, they might not like my hair, but let me be so good that they can't even deny that they, they don't even care what the color of my hair is, right? So mm -hmm. I think um, th there's, there's kind of like that bit where you, there are, of course, like so many things that shift and it could be the color of your hair, your face or your height, anything really, but, but also making yourself that good that you're undeniable. And I think that kind of working towards that and being positive, because always there's going to be so much rejection literally always even if you're the best or whatever so much rejection and and people are gonna have to the dancers future dancers are gonna have to know that that's just a constant thing and, and that's okay. why you work so much <laughs> alex <laughs> i was literally but I also, like but i also get tons of rejection it's just normal in this world it is normal. is there a job that you really wanted that you didn't um have the opportunity to work on that you were like Ugh. um i'm sure tons but I moved on, but I, I mean, I can't even think of like something specific, but daily, like, I mean, not daily, but like <laughs> everything you audition for, you don't really know what it's going to be. Often you don't necessarily have the whole scope of the project, but you know, like you just, you don't get your, I don't get my heart tied to any one specific thing because yeah. it's like so, a lot of times it's just beyond your control. I mean, even like, for instance, I mean, so you think the first time that was something that I didn't get or couldn't do because yeah, you're of my prior contracts and stuff like that. And that was like something I really wanted. So it was something I kind of went on, went after. But even like Descendants 2, I really wanted to do it. I didn't, I didn't get it because of, you know, um, not being a DC local, but then I booked Greatest Showman. So, I mean, like things happen for a reason and, you know. The old like one door closes, another opens. Usually yeah, mine's you can't, being can't, the case. I can't hang on to these projects that I don't get because that would just be like a daily thing. <laughs> right, and it, it, mentally it drives you nuts, honestly, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, can, it definitely can drive you nuts, especially if like you go a little while where you don't get like a yes. It, you can be like, oh gosh, like it. Like my, 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 I have a friend that always says like, it'll be three days and you haven't worked or something like that. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then like, you'll just book something like the next hour. Like it was like, like he'll, he'll just say like stuff to me because like, I'm, because usually I, often I am constantly working and then like suddenly I'll have like, he'll joke and say like, there's like three days where you're not doing something and you'll think like, oh my gosh, like I'm done for like. I'm never <laughs> working like, again. Yeah, never <laughs> working again. But yeah, I mean like that's like, you know, your life as, a, as an artist, right? Yep, that is very true. And I will <laughs> tell you, even on the reporter end, <laughs> never working again and then all of a sudden they're never like here's working a, again. Yeah, here's a like six-month project <laughs> <laughs> exactly
Oh, well, it was such a treat to catch up with you. It's, I feel like it's been too long or I'm like way too long, <laughs> way too long, but I, I always happy to see you working. Always see happy to see you popping up on my um, Instagram and all my other social uh, media accounts. I'm like, Oh, I know him. You. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe and uh, come visit us on the West coast when it's safe to do so. I will. I will. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.